Welcome my fellow colonials to another episode. This is Mesor Barbarus, the European harvester and care guide. Like most captive species, they start their life in what's known as a test tube setup. Often regarded as a beginner species, the most common mistake made is disturbing them too much. They're very sensitive to light, noise and vibration, and this can cause the demise of any colony during founding. If they are too stressed, it is common for them to eat their brood and for the queen to stop laying altogether. I would recommend checking them once a month. If you can't wait that long, then at least 14 days, once every two weeks. With this species, patience pays off. Check out my colony, nearing the hundreds of workers moving into their brand new formic area. Only three months on from that clip, my colony has exploded. They have over 300 workers now. During their founding stage, I fed them on a diet of chopped up mealworm, fruit flies, and small seeds. It's important to maintain a variety of seeds. I fed mine on chia seeds, millet, grass seeds, rapeseed, niger seed, and canary seed. Once the colony has produced its first majors, you can introduce larger prey insects and seeds, such as dubia roaches and sunflower seeds. Mesor barbarous are known as the harvester ant because they harvest seeds and store them in underground granaries. They then process the seeds into what's known as ant bread, this is the primary food source for most colonies, but they do need a top up of other protein sources from insects. They also require fresh water, which can be given to them in a test tube or in a water feeder. This species can be happily kept at around 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Coming from Southern Europe, they do hibernate. They tend to go into hibernation or deer pause at around 15 degrees Celsius, with their temperatures dropping as low as 10 degrees Celsius but no lower during this hibernation phase. They hibernate between the months of October and March and start to come out of hibernation during the warmer seasons. However, sometimes they may choose not to hibernate depending on the weather conditions. When hibernating your captive colonies, it's always best practice to check on them once every two weeks or once a month, as if they were in their founding stage again. If you've been paying attention to the footage, you can see I've had to change the outworld of my metal barbarous. Once they have majors, and their population has grown to quite a number, they can be quite destructive. They will happily chew through an etong nest, and will easily get through a wooden or cork nest which some people use. I personally always recommend an acrylic nest, as this is the best to keep the humidity levels for both the granary and the nest. You want the humidity levels for the granary to be about 50% humidity most, but preferably around 30% humidity is perfect whereas the nest needs to be up to 80% humidity so that they can make ant bread and care for the brood properly. Probably the most fascinating thing to this species is their polymorphism, the range in sizes of workers who perform different jobs throughout the colony. The larger majors are there to break open seeds and cut through the exoskeletons of their prey insects. The small, media and minor workers are the general dog's bodies of the colony. They go out and scout, they bring back the seeds, they look after the nursery and make the ant bread. It's amazing to watch them go out on their trails, find something that they're unable to deal with and go back to get the larger majors to come to work on it. They truly are an industrial species. They go to work just like a little factory, taking bits off and taking it back to the nest. If you have found this video useful, please take a minute to like, subscribe and follow. I'll also put a link to my blog site in the bio. Check that out as well, as I update on there and my Facebook page. For now this is me, The Colonialist, signing out. Thank you for watching.